Ryan Dolman returns to the starting lineup tonight, and he and the rest of the Bucks are determined to stop a six-game losing streak. They'll do it without their slugging first baseman, Derek Lee. Hit by a pitch in the left hand last night. It is bruised. He's not in the lineup. We're at PNC Park for the wrap-up of this four-game series between the Chicago Cubs and your Pittsburgh Pirates. Hi, again, everyone. Along with Steve Blass, I'm Tim Neverett. Six-game losing skid matches the longest losing streak of the season. Teams go through these streaks, Steve, but manager Clint Hurdle trying to keep things balanced in the clubhouse. Absolutely. Very important for the players to be able to handle this, but very important, even more important, for the manager to set the correct tone. The good word tonight comes to us from the manager, Clint Hurdle, as he talked to the team and talked to the press. He said, these are the best of times for leadership. The challenge is for me to keep encouraging them. What they don't need now is to be bullied. They don't need to be ripped up in the paper. And they don't need to have their manhood challenge. The game is challenging them, and they know that. Meeting the challenge last night, Charlie Morton, he went to seven innings, gave up no runs, struck out seven. Tonight, James McDonald goes. Our PNC achievement for the achiever in you. Yep, uh, J-Mac has been doing a very good job, especially in this ballpark. Don't change the thing, James. What he needs to do tonight is cool off Castro. Starlin Castro, the 21-year-old all-star shortstop, has been spectacular. Nine out of 14 in the series. The first Cub with three straight, three-hit games since Derek Lee in April of 2008. He is very, very good. Pitching for the Cubs tonight, Rodrigo Lopez, as he'll face James McDonald. We're punching your ticket to some National League Central Division baseball tonight at PNC Park. It's the Cubs and the Pirates coming up. Baseball on Root Sports is sponsored by Barrel Automotive. Barrel.com. Definitely worth the click. Let's go, Bucks. James McDonald set to start this ball game against the Cubs, one that the Pirates need to have. Let's take a look at the lineup for Chicago. Leading off Starlin Castro and Barney, the second baseman, Ramirez and Pena. Marlon Byrd looking for his 1,000th career hit. He'll get it with his next base hit. 
to which Soto Colvin and then Lopez batting ninth and we are underway with ball one inside to Starlin Castro. Welcome back Ryan Domit behind the plate number 41 catching for the Pittsburgh Pirates tonight. 1 0 pitch and Castro up in the air to right field Xavier Paul racing over near the wall Leach makes a catch. Oh, a play by Xavier Paul. The game's very first play is a spectacular one. It has been that difficult to get Castro out. Looked like a routine fly ball to right field, just kept carrying. You see Xavier trying to measure where he is in relation to the wall. AGH camera going to slow it down, and the big glove has enough leather. The second cow that died for that glove made the difference. And I think Xavier thought he was a little closer to the wall. He, he jumped up there. He had a little bit more room, but it's hard. He's trying to stay locked in with the baseball, and he comes away with a very, very good, good play. Big out to start the ball game. So rubbing his arm there. He banged up against the wall, perhaps. How about these gloves now? They're, they're big and they're hinged. Boy, you get the ball in them, they're going to try to close around it. I guess they take more than one count to make. See in relation how close to the wall he actually was. See, he's trying to put the, put the glove out to find out how close, but he can't really take any time to look at the wall at that point. That's a really fine play. Two and two now to Darwin Barney. Get Castro out. Slow it down again. He's reaching out, wondering where that wall is, and mm, really good effort. Never quit on the play. I think that's the key. Didn't quit on it. Popped up. This should be easier. Garrett Jones drifting into foul ground makes the catch. Two gone for the Cubs in the top half of the first inning. Defensively for the Pirates behind James McDonald tonight. Brian Ludwig in left. Andrew McCutcheon in center. Xavier Paul, as you just saw, in right field. Brandon Wood gets the start at shortstop tonight. A healthy scratch is Ronnie Cedeno. Walker and Jones on the right side. And Ryan Domit doing the catching. Been out since late May. Broken bone in his left ankle. And now he is back and spoke with him at length yesterday in the clubhouse. And if there was anybody ready to get back into a ball game, it's Ryan Dolman. He was itching and scratching his way back on rehab. He told me that he was ready a long time ago. At least he felt he was. And take nothing away from Michael McHenry. He has done a terrific job, but it is good to see Ryan back active with the Pirates. And there is a little mustard on the fastball from James McDonough. Strike zone presented by Range Resources and right down Broadway, so you better have some mustard on it. And he did. Fired that in there at 94. 2 1 to Ramirez. And a hot shot down to Wood. Plenty of time. And he throws him out. And a nice job for James McDonald. A tidy 11 pitch. Top of the first. No score after a half inning.
Our Day Automotive key matchup of the game, Andrew McCutcheon against Rodrigo Lopez, one for four. That one was a home run, and he has been on base often against the Cubs, 27 straight games he's reached safely against Chicago. Rest of the Pirates lineup brought to you by Toyota. Garrett Jones will hit second and Walker. Ludwig moves into the cleanup spot tonight. Alvarez fifth, Dolman sixth, Xavier Paul. Then Brandon Wood, the shortstop, and James McDonald bats ninth against right-hander Rodrigo Lopez. Veteran, 35-year-old right-hander, native of Mexico, Rodrigo Lopez. Delivers ball one to Kutch. He'd probably like to have that call. But pretty good-looking delivery. His record since coming over from the Atlanta organization. This one to left field, and that is a nice running catch by Blake DeWitt. Kutchin hit that one on the nose, but DeWitt caught up to it. There was one out. That ball was well hit and trying to hook away from Blake DeWitt in left field. Andrew got around it, wants to head over toward the line, but DeWitt didn't put on that one. So two good plays against the respective leadoff men. DeWitt in left field tonight. Alfonso Soriano the night off. You can see he's already uh, fighting that uh, sun. There's a little bit of sun that was involved in that play. That was an above average play. Pitch to Garrett Jones is outside ball one. And Mike Quaddy saying with the stretch that the Cubs have of games, including a, a night game tonight, they play a day game at Wrigley Field tomorrow, followed by a 12 noon start Saturday at Wrigley Field. So he wants to get guys some days off. Soriano is uh, one of those guys tonight. Mike was ejected in the fifth inning last night along with Tyler Colvin for arguing balls and strikes, although Mike was walking away. From umpire Bob Davidson when he got run. But then uh, he uh, reversed his steps and went and found out why he got tossed and was told by Bob. Fifth time this year for Quaddy to get run. 2 1 pitch. Jones to left field. Try the sun field again. Got it to it. And he's got it for the second out. Okay, we're convinced he can get it done. Let's try somebody else. Strike zone presented by Range Resources as Garrett Jones goes the other way, hits it decently to the opposite field, but Blake DeWitt handling the sun out there very nicely. And it's going to be the last half inning that's going to be a factor for a left fielder, but he's okay with it. Neil Walker takes ball one. Last night, Walker did not. Get on base, did not get a hit, went 0 for 4. And that was the first time in his career against Chicago, albeit a short career so far, but first time he didn't get on base with a base hit against the Cubs. One ball and one strike to Neil. Got rid of that beard, too. Yeah, well, his folks must have got bad with him. So, listen, if you're going to live in this house, you're going to clean up. <laughs> He moved out. Did he move out? Yeah, this this just in. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. I thought he was still living at home. <laughs> he's living out of home. He's living near home, but not at home. Has that been a while? Yeah. A couple of years, maybe. No, no, not even a couple of years <laughs> since, since last season. But you know, live near your your home in your hometown. Very close knit family, and maybe, who knows? <laughs> maybe some parental advice, or maybe just changing it up as players do. Hits one right at Castro. And the Pirates gone quietly in the first one, two, three. To the second inning we go at PMC Park.
Allegheny General Hospital sports medicine injury update last night. Carlos Marmol on a 3 2 pitch. Got Derek Lee. Lee moved his hand trying to get out of the way. And it hit the back of that left hand. He is unavailable today. Pirates calling it a bruise at this point. Left hand confusion. They're right there talking to Frank Velasquez, the strength and conditioning coordinator with the Pirates. Carlos Pena swinging a miss. Well, you know, there's been a little uh, recent uptick in strikeouts for James McDonald. Last 17 innings, 21 strikeouts. Five last game against the Phillies in the losing cause, but then nine against Atlanta to start before that. Oh, one pitch is in there for a strike called, nothing in two. Well, Steve, it was about a year ago, almost to the day. August 5th of last season when J Mac made his debut as a starter for the Pirates struck out eight pitched six shutout innings against Colorado right here at PNC Park. Maybe he can get those strikeout numbers up again tonight. Strike three. And that was a little strange on an 0 2 pitch to see Pena show butt. And that is strikeout number one for J Mac. Strike zone from range resources. Yeah, what what's he setting up there by uh, squaring around? Well, we talked about left hand confusion. There is a batter's box confusion. The 100th strikeout of the year. For McDonald. In his 115 innings. Good ratio. The 113th strikeout for Carlos Pena. James has uh, been well documented. He's done a good job here at PNC Park. Just one loss and 10 starts. Not uh, all that many wins. Three and one. Rather have more wins if you're pitching that well. The chopper that is wide of third base. I'm just still kind of baffled at why he would square on an 0 2 pitch. Well, I'm sure Mike Quaddy is too. I don't, know. I don't know how you can give away there, in a bat like that. There, there is no answer to that. Pena out. One down. Top of the second inning. J Mac will take the strikeouts any way they come. And now ahead of Marlon Bird. One ball and two strikes. Nicely done with a fastball up and in. Just a protection swing. Yep, last Saturday, a, a tough uh, outing for James against the Philadelphia Phillies and Cliff Lee came away. With the L there to take his record down to seven and five. To center field, McCutcheon right there. Two down for the Cubs. Bird flies out. That fits, doesn't it? Bird flies away to McCutcheon's glove. Charlie, yeah, he got off to a similar start last night and he never looked back. Seven shutout innings for the right hander. Blake DeWitt takes ball one. DeWitt made the nice catch on McCutcheon. McCutcheon lined it hard to left field in the bottom of the first inning. Pitch way outside, reached for by Ryan Doma. Ryan was gushing how proud he was of this team while having to watch from 1500 miles away what they were doing winning series after series couldn't wait to get back here Had to spend a lot of time in Bradenton Florida on the rehab trail says his legs are good caught back to back nights earlier this week in AAA in Gwinnett in Georgia this one popped up to wood and six in a row set down to start the ball game for James McDonald.
Off for the Buckos here in the bottom half of the second inning. If you didn't know, his breakout season was in 2008 when he hit 37 home runs for the St. Louis Cardinals. Now, when he reached 29, it was significant because it marked the first time that a man who bats from the right side of the plate but throws left-handed actually hit 29 home runs. Now, Steve Blass, how hard is that to do, to bat from one side of the plate and throw with, with the other arm or the other hand, if you will? Well, it's got to be difficult, Dan. I never tried it. <laughs> Plus, I couldn't hit. And I was I was concerned about my throwing too. So quite a package for Ryan Ludwig, but uh, pretty unique when he's the first guy to have ever done that. And of course he didn't stop there. He went from 29 to 37. That's it's got to be extremely. I mean it's rare. And you wonder about the background growing up. Okay, am I going to be a lefty, righty? Well, I'm not sure. So I'll try something from both sides. And it stuck right-handed. Sure did. Oh, one pitch inside one and one. Looking against this veteran, we told you Lopez has been around. This is career start number 206 for Rodrigo Lopez. One is in there for a call strike. Yeah, Lopez has been around. Yep. Drafted, yeah, drafted in 1995 by the Padres, and that made him particularly happy because his idol was Fernando Valenzuela, who was with them at the time. Native of Mexico and then uh, time with Baltimore, Colorado, Philadelphia, and last year with Arizona made 33 starts, 7 and 16 with a 5 ERA, but 33 starts, 37 home runs given up. Ludwig to center field. Going back, Bird. One out for the Pirates in the second inning. Well, I'll tell you one thing of what I've seen balls hit in the air, it's going to be another night where the ball is carrying very well. That ball was hit off the end of the bat and sent Bird back several steps toward the warning track. And you go back to the ball that Castro, Castro hit. That ball had a lot of carry to right field. So, you know, uh, might have some balls uh, with a good flight time tonight. Let's hope we see one right here. I think this is a pretty good matchup, too. Alvarez against the guy who gives up the long ball. Pedro, two hits and four trips to the plate last night. Thing in one to Pedro. Again, his approach has been a story lately. Remember at the beginning of the season, Steve, how many times he found himself in an 0-2 count, trying to be patient, a little bit too patient. Well, since his return from Triple A, trying to hit more pitches in the zone, and as we say that, he falls into an 0-2 count. Yeah, when you go 0-2 against a major league pitcher, you are you're at his mercy to a heavy percentage of time. But more often than not, since he's been back, we have seen him swing earlier in the count, and it has paid off for him. 0 2, and he goes the other way, and a diving stop by Ramirez. They were shading him up toward the shortstop, and the ball was hit just okay. And then Ramos had time to stretch out and get the leather around it. And when you're 0 2, you really are at the mercy of the pitcher. Good play by Ramos Ramirez. Talking to Clint Hurdle about Pedro earlier today. He said he's been happy with the ability he's shown to stay back on the ball. He thinks that's a good sign. Trying to generate bat speed with his hands and not his body, so he's able to stay back a little bit more. Ryan Dolman struck out to end the game last night in his first major league plate appearance in two months. And Pirates with two switch hitters in the lineup. It gives you a little versatility against the bullpen. One-zero pitch. Slow ground ball to Darwin Barney. And just like McDonald, from Rodrigo Lopez has set down the first six batters he has faced.
Park tonight. You can follow the Pirates with MLB.com at Bat 11 app for your iPhone, iPad, Android, or BlackBerry. Get live audio, pitch by pitch tracking, video highlights, and more. Text at Bat to 31826 or visit Pirates.com for details. I'm looking for a first base runner this ball game. That's what the young guys want. That's what everybody wants. You see some base runners from the home team, They're not necessarily. From the guys in blue. Giovanni Soto will lead things off, then Tyler Colvin, the eight hitter, and the pitcher Rodrigo Lopez. Soto last night, 0 for 3 with a walk, getting 242. He has 10 home runs. And McDonald delivers. A little bit low, ball one. James McDonald in 10 home starts this year is 3 and 1 with an ERA of 2.83. And Soto bangs this one down into left field. It's gone. Home run number 11. And the Cubs on the board first. It's 1 0. There's your first base runner, but he's not going to stop. He found that short porch down inside the left field foul pole. It's vulnerable down in that corner. The rest of the left field is very big, but if you catch the corner, Strike zone presented by Range Resources show you this delivery in the go zone in the power zone up and in but not quite far enough in. That uh, grid there will show you it's on the corner but uh, you can see by the way he reacted that was not a ball that pushed him off the plate or got in on his hands. Pitch outside to Tyler Colvin. One nothing Chicago in the top half of the third inning. Cubs have come in here to PNC Park and taken three straight. They've not won four straight in Pittsburgh, Steve, since June of 1959. And they took four straight at Forbes Field. Mm. The Cubs last took four games from the Pirates at Wrigley Field in early June of 1985. And just, just to answer your question the way you look at me, I was still in high school in 59. I, I so didn't I, ask. I know you didn't have I to. I wasn't even thinking. You didn't have to ask. I got the look. <laughs> Strike zone by range resources as you can see and it happens so often after a home run you have a tendency to even subconsciously stay away from the power away away after you get burned. Three and two to Colton. When did you get drafted 60 drafted but no, not drafted <laughs> signed. <laughs> there you go. 1960. Yep. The draft came That's in, the, I think, 65. Wasn't Rick Mundy the first guy drafted? It's a generational thing between us. That's yeah. why I said drafted. I know. Fly ball to shallow center. Neil Walker will make the out. So one down. And go back and look at that pitch that Soto drilled over the left field wall. You see, he's not uh, getting pushed back away from the plate. That's right in the power zone. Not far enough up, not far enough in. And you don't have to hit it a long way. I mean, it's, it's down in that corner. It's not a, a big time drive. Although he hit it very well, that was going to be action for the Cubs, even if it didn't clear the wall. Pitcher Rodrigo Lopez takes ball one. As you mentioned earlier, Steve, he was signed by the Padres originally out of Mexico. But had his best years of the Orioles. Uh, 2004, he was a 14 game winner. The next year, he won 15. So a couple of real good years back to back with the Orioles before moving on to Colorado, Philadelphia, and Arizona. Two and one to Lopez. But then with Atlanta twice, second time. Second time before coming over to the Cubs. In a trade in May, late May, he was traded to the Cubs by the Braves for left handed pitcher Ryan Butcher. Cubs were going through the injury bug with their pitchers, needed another starter. Lopez got the call. Put him away, James. Two and two, and the pitch. They'll have another. You don't see that very often. A fan holding a hat out. Remember, we used to catch a lot of ball. These balls hold the hat out. See if you can catch it in the hat. 
don't see that all that often anymore. Well, in the old days, you stick a hat out. People used to put money in it. All right. Give that a go tomorrow afternoon. Try it tomorrow. <laughs> take your time. Take your time. McDonald fields, throws, and he got it. Two down for the Cubs now in the third inning. Let's check the Barrel Automotive lead leader's stats. Starlin Castro, he's not in any sophomore slump. Tied with Jose Reyes of the Mets for first and hits with 142 to start the night tonight. 41 multi-hit games. That's second in the National League. Eight triples. Youngest all-star in franchise history. Barrel Automotive at Barrel.com. Definitely worth the click. That number of multi-hit games, 41, that is, to me, as impressive as any of those other statistics. That's, that's getting it done. Want to know to Castro? Of course, number one in hits in the National League is pretty good too. I'll take a strike, one and one. Castro last night became the first Cubs player to hit a home run in the eighth inning or later of a one nothing victory since Sammy Sosa did it to the Philadelphia Phillies in 2003. Will never pass the mound. Wood will have to hurry. He's got it. So the blemish, the solo home run to lead off the inning by Giovanni Soto, and the Cubs with a one nothing lead. Pounds, nine ounces, 19 inches. He is the son of Rico Reshoff, our high first base camera guy who All is right. back tonight. Congratulations. 7 11. 7 11. That's it. Always open. Way to go, Rico. Number two. Yeah. Older brother is two years old. One more, he can field an outfield. Xavier Paul to start things off. Pinch ran last night after Matt Diaz got on in the bottom of the ninth, stole a base. Targets couldn't get him around. That was actually in the eighth inning last night, not the ninth. He stayed in and played right field. Made a nice catch to start the game. Starlin Castro flying out to deep right field and up against the wall. Paul made that grab. One and one. Lopez delivers. Two balls and a strike. You're talking about a rough start for Lopez last time out against St. Louis. Four and a third inning, six earned runs. How's that look, Steve? Doesn't look too good. Looks ten good. Ten good. Now I saw you eating something in here last <laughs> night. Oh, Sangi sent up a 
pulled pork sandwich. And a base hit for Paul. First hit of the game for the Pirates, and they've got themselves a base runner. Tying run aboard in the third. Strike zone, range resources, fights it off. Pirates get some action. Now Brandon Wood. 226 hitter, his sixth home run. Came in a pinch hitting role the other night. The first pinch hit home run for the Pirates this year. And his second pinch hit home run of his career. First one, his first major league home run while with the Angels. One ball, no strikes to Wood, getting the start tonight at shortstop. Anytime we see Sedeno sit, you want to find out. Why the change in the lineup and Wood getting an opportunity tonight and Clint Hurdle you know, challenged. You got to get guys in, got to get them regular playing time, get regular at bats. And so you're, so you're, you're looking just with a night off, looking for winning combination. Anything. This can be 12 to 8, 1 to 2 to 1, whatever it takes to come away with a W and uh, spit this bad taste out. There goes Paul. Pitches a strike. Throw down is in time to get him. Giovanni Soto erases the tying run. And a good tag by Darwin Barney. He's the uh, other part of this good looking tandem up the middle for the Cubs. Good jump. And you see Barney, I think, takes a short hop and still gets the tag down. And that's, uh, that's not an automatic thing when you go up for the bounce and get the ball in the glove and back down in time. That's a that's good. Tag technique. Xavier Paul wasn't too happy with the call. Thought he got tagged high on the leg. Jerry Lane, the crew chief out there at second base, calling him out. 2 1 pitch. 3 and 1 now to Brandon Wood. Let's see what we can see about this tag, or if we can see the tag. There goes Xavier. You can see Barney keep that glove. Oh, there's the good look. Yep. You got to go up to get the bounce and then back down and make the tag. And Wood takes the walk. Well, a lot of guys that steal bases don't believe that they're called, that they're caught all the time, but they are called out. It's just such a, a tough call to make for any umpire. It's such a bang bang play in most cases. Well, it really becomes difficult when tags are made up on the body. So you got to look at where the tag occurs on the body and where the foot is in relation to the base, or if it is on the base. McDonald wants it up the first base side, rolls foul. Like James was chasing the baseball. <laughs> it was throwing a block for him. He's just following his blocker. Right, yeah. I'm paying you. I'll tell you, when, when you bunt like anything to introduce chaos, and if you bunt the ball and the catcher's got it, you. You try to run out in fair territory or throw your arms up in the air. Create some confusion. No balls and a strike to McDonald. We'll try to get Wood into scoring position here. And McCutcheon up next. Puts it in play. Nicely Perfect. done. Sacrifice bunt for James McDonald. That is the fourth time he's done that successfully. That's the perfect run. Little pop up that just dies out in the middle of everybody. Died right in the grass. Sandwich. And now McCutcheon coming up following this. Donald got down the line pretty well, too. Former outfielder. Played in the outfield while. A young minor leaguer in the Dodgers system. One and oh. This is the last time the Cubs play here at PNC Park this season. Pirates will play the Cubs three more times at Wrigley Field in September. 
one on one to McCutcheon. I've seen enough of them here this week. <laughs> Seems like they've been yeah. here a week and a half, uh, especially Tuesday. They banged up 21 hits. Now, last year I didn't like the results, and nobody did, but against the Cubs, I think people liked the results in 2010. Pirates seem to handle it. Ball to short. Castro throws out McCutcheon. And the Pirates leave a man. We're through three full at PNC Park. One nothing Chicago. by Toyota. Buy right the first time and save more. Visit your local Toyota dealer for details. And by AT&T. Let's go Bucks. Tonight's AT&T Mobility Trivia Question has to do with the following. Andrew McCutcheon has reached base 27 straight games against the Cubs. Who was the last Pirate to accomplish this? Last Pirate to reach base safely. 27 at least against the Cubs. Any thoughts? Hmm. I wonder how recent that previous pirate did it. No, no clues, no tips, nothing to work with. And the pitch is up high for a ball one, one and one. Everybody having a good time at the ballpark. A little number and foul ground. For Barney for strike two. Now this has been the place to be this summer, PNC Park. The attendance figures have proven that. Nice crowd here tonight on a Thursday night. Mm -hmm. Expecting big weekend. Big, big weekend as well. I'm going to say Tony Womack. That's my guess. You you know the answer, yeah, don't you? I, I don't know the answer, but I would think that's a sensible guess. Considering the way that he did get on base as often as he did, and the number of bases that he stole. Rennie Stennett almost did it in one day. And seven for seven. He was only 20 shy that one day. Yeah, but if they had lights or if they were playing night games back then, he might have kept going. And Barney looks at a breaking ball inside two and two. Two two pitch. This one is a flare and foul ground right to Garrett Jones. Byron Barney is out. This is a second foul out to Mr. Jones. Good looking tandem up the middle with uh, Barney and Castro. Jones playing first base tonight for Derek Lee. Lee scratched from the lineup. Couldn't go tonight. Had the bruise on the back of his left hand. Remember in spring training, Lee had an issue with his right wrist. And in the offseason in November, he had surgery on his right thumb and said that he had some 
atrophy in that wrist and that caused some problems in spring training. There's a bouncer down to third base. Alvarez straightens up, throws out Ramos Ramirez. Cubs on five seasons ago. That hit on the right hand broke it. It's the uh, Dodgers. The problems and some with, issues. with the hands. Carlos Pena struck out looking when he squared the bunt on an 0-2 pitch and took it for strike three. Confounding everybody. I still don't get it. You fake a bunt 0-2. And, and he hammers uh -oh. this one to deep center field. Going back McCutcheon. He turns to watch it. That one's gone. Solo home run for Carlos Pena and he's forgotten all about striking out his first time up. It's now two to nothing Chicago. We said the ball carrying uh, very well tonight, but that one was uh, one that was going to have a chance anyway. You could hear the crack of the bat all the way up here. A lot of strikeouts, but uh, 21 home runs also on the ledger. First pitch home run. That is something the Cubs are starting to become known for as Pena. Now has eight first pitch home runs. Trailing his teammate Aramis Ramirez who has 10 of them. He leads the majors in that category. High Plains drifter. Up in the shrubbery. This is the ninth home run for the Cubs this series. They have been playing long ball here in Pittsburgh. Last Cub with more first pitch long balls in a season than Ramirez or Pena. Guy we were just talking about a moment ago, Derek Lee in 2009, he had 11 first pitch home runs. I'd like to see his hand get healthy so he can have a few yeah. first pitch or any pitch home runs for the Pirates. He's got two already that he had in his debut. Interesting subject because most pitchers like to get out in front, first pitch strike. And you better uh, think about throwing a quality strike rather than just to, to get me over curveball or just any kind of uh, strike in the zone. Marlon Bird threads the needle for his 1,000th career hit. Two out single for Marlon Bird, and he's reached two milestones during this series. Tuesday night, he scored his 500th run, and that is his 1,000th career hit. He'll save that baseball for him. Pat Listash, the bench coach, with it. Big milestone. 1,000 major league hits. You are a major leaguer. A significant credential. Blake DeWitt, the batter, takes low. And to think Pujols has 2,000, Derek Jeter has 3,000. How hard is it to get 1,000? Just ask Marlon Bird, who's been around for a long time. Indeed. Big time milestone. And DeWitt takes a strike. And with the way that Derek Jeter got it, going five for five in a game, and of course his 3,000th hit was a home run. Only in New York. Right. The, the script, they had to follow the script. Written on Broadway, apparently. Here is DeWitt, 0 for 1. Former Dodger. Stretched by McDonald. He'll throw to first, and Marlon Bird gets back. Apparently, there's some concern with the teammate of Derek's about playing some poker. You know, sit around with some buddies and play poker. Everybody in America does it. Well, we don't know the exact circumstances of uh, A Rod's poker playing, but it's enough to get the attention of Major League Baseball. And they pitch inside, two and one. And Bird thinking about taking off there, trying to measure James with his release to home plate. Just don't draw it inside straights, Derek, or uh, A Rod, or Derek, anybody who plays poker. Uh, 2 1 from McDonald. And this one is roped to right field and deep, and it's another home run, the 10th of the series. For the Cubs, Blake DeWitt with his third of the year. It is now four to nothing, Chicago. 
all the runs produced on home runs. Incredible. Incredible how the ball is. You know, I, I, I was almost thinking along the lines that uh, they were picking up pitches the other night or something was given away and then Charlie just shut him down last night. So I got away from that thought. Now I'm starting to think about it again tonight. Larry Searage will come out and pay a visit, but boy, this ball was hit that quite almost, a long way. That gets almost over that uh, last fence and bouncing toward the water again. McDonald has now given up 18 home runs this year. Came into the game giving up 15. Now the three tonight. Solo homer by Soto to start the third. A two out home run by Pena here in the fourth. And then DeWitt's two run homer after Marlon Bird's base hit. Three tonight, six the other night, one last night. There's Soto taking a strike. Soto hit one down in the left field corner. For his home run, Pena hit one to dead center field. It hit just under the letter A in Pirates in the shrubbery out there. And then the one deep to right by DeWitt. That's a long poke. 0 oh, 2. 1 and 2. Well, the Pirate Bats have to get going. They've now gone. 12 straight innings without producing a run. They got a run Tuesday night in the ninth, but blanked last night. Soto down on strikes. More damage done for the Cubs. Three runs off of James McDonald. Home runs by Pena and DeWitt. Service fees. This deal includes any ticket purchased for any of the remaining Pirates home games for the rest of the season. Don't miss out on great promotions, key divisional matchups, fireworks, and more. For tickets, visit Pirates.com. Fees aren't waived. Pirates are paying all of your fees. How about that for a shot? Is that a postcard waiting to happen? Yep. Sun going down off to the west. There's our man Danny Got Corso. It. Got it. I hope he's strapped in on that bridge. Isn't it? We don't want him to fall in. Captures that shot. That's spectacular. Stand the man. Oh, two hands down, please. <laughs> Nothing in two. Quickly to Garrett Jones. Jones 0 for 1. He flied to left. 
in the first inning. Two home runs in the game Tuesday. Rips this one foul up the first base side. Jones with a dozen home runs on the year. 42 runs batted in. He's been batting in that two hole with McCutcheon leading off. Neil Walker, number three hitter on deck. Ball two strikes. Clint was talking the other day about trying to cover a couple of weeks with McCutcheon at the leadoff spot. Jones hitting second, perhaps. Waiting to see what happens when guys come back. Jose Tabata is due to go out on a rehab stint pretty soon. He's been running full speed here at the park the last few days. Two and two. Talked to Alex Presley for a while today just to check on him. He had uh, uh, some swings off a tee the other day and felt that his, his thumb was not feeling well at all. And he was not happy with the results, but swung today and he said it was much, much better. Jones. It's this one well deep to right field. That'll get over the head of Coleman into the wall. Around first, and to the second base is Garrett Jones with the leadoff double. Let's give these Cubbies a little answer here. The 75th career double for Garrett Jones, his 18th of the season. In that go zone for a left hand power guy. Powers it to the gap in right center field. And the ball carried. Yep, and that one, well, <laughs> didn't even uh, need as much carries as some of the other, because that, that ball was tattooed. Well, fouled off down the line. Get out to the trip total media sign. In a real hurry, right by the 375 mark. Love to answer that three spot that the Cubs put up, even if it's one. Make a little bit of a statement. You can get more than that, or even louder. Oh, one to Walker, push to the right side. Darwin Barney will throw him out. That'll get Jones over to third base. 4 3 goes to put out. Walker gone, and there is Jones 90 feet away. Pirates looking for their first run. Perhaps one of these guys will drive it in. Maybe Ludwig. How about Andrew McCutcheon? And the question we asked you, our 18 team mobility question. McCutcheon has reached base safely in 27 straight games against the Cubs. Who was the last Pirate to accomplish this? Brian Giles. April 22nd, 2001. September 28, 2002. It wasn't. I, I thought your guess was good, but it was a good guess. Yeah, but it's Tony Womack. You're usually wrong, and it was again. So I've got the streak going too. All right. Let's see if we can uh, get Ryan to add on to his RBI total right here. Backed him up a bit. One and one. And Lopez has been around, as we said, so he knows what he's doing. He's trying to crowd him. Take that. Uh, Arm extension away. Third career start for Lopez against the Pirates. One to know. Foul ball. One ball and two strikes. Ludwig grew up in Las Vegas. Went to high school with NASCAR star Kurt Busch in the same class. Durango. That's it. You got it. We talked about that the other day. I mentioned it to him at the cage yesterday. Pretty surprised that I knew that. <laughs> Durango kid. Yeah. Probably hasn't heard that in a while. One, two. That's up high. Two and two. And the Cubs uh, prepared to give the Pirates the run. They're playing back. Two balls, two strikes. Jones, the runner at third. One out. Four nothing Chicago. And a pitch. And Ludwig. Has his first base hit as a bucko. There you go. And it's four to one. RBI number 65 for Ryan Ludwig. He now is the Pirates leader in that category. 
Of course, he brought 64 of those with him from San Diego. Yep. Monkey is off the bat. He's on the board as a bucko. And the Pirates are on the board. Well, the Pirates cash in on the leadoff double, get a run. Ludwig at first base, and the batter now, Pedro Alvarez. I still got a feeling Pedro is going to run into one off this right hander. Has not hit one here this year. And he rips that one to right center field. Base hit for Pedro. He's one for two. First ball swinging for Alvarez, and he gets himself a knock. Hit the ball right on the button, didn't get under it, but that's okay. Hit it solid. Wood stops at second. Pedro with another hit. It's two out of four last night. Picks up another hit here tonight. Average starting to climb a little bit. Here is Ryan Doman. You get the feeling that Mike Quaddy, based on the last outing for uh, Lopez and the fact that you know he's been kind of shaky, uh, you wonder how much of a leash he'll give him. Is there Get this close to a sweep situation. You want to see what you can do. So we'll see how it plays out. Got seven strong innings out of his starter last night, Matt Garza. Base hit to right, and Ludwig will be held at third base. Wisely, strong throw from Colvin. Four hits in the inning, three straight, and the Pirates have the tying run aboard in the fourth. Bases full of buckos. There's that familiar stroke from Ryan Doman. Now they want to talk with Lopez. And I think the phone perhaps ringing in that cup bullpen. I had a feeling that Mike Plotty would uh, run out the staff here. Got a chance to do something with this game, although nothing really serious happening at this point out the bullpen. Now you want to cash it in because you've got three base hits, but you've not done anything after that first run. You know, these pirate fans want their buckos to get out of the skit. The left field posse, that's they made it. Well, they might be competing with the left field loonies. <laughs> Two groups out there. Yeah, two groups. There they take on the left field loonies. That's uh, that's a challenge. But now you got to you got to keep the ball off the ground here. You you, you don't want to uh, waste these three base hits. You're putting together a nice little offensive inning here at the bottom of the fourth. But so far, just one to show for it. You're gonna see how you can uh, cash it in. Xavier Paul with a base hit in the third inning. Swings at the first pitch, fouls it off. 0 and one. But that for a number with the bases loaded. 455. Five out of 11. In this season, three for five with the bases full. Ludwig at third, Alvarez at second, Dolman at first. And the 0 1 coming to Xavier Paul from Rodrigo Lopez. Strike call. Fouls off the first pitch and then the strike zone shows that it picks up that inside corner. The 0 2. And Paul hits the ground to the left side. Ramirez throw to second and back to first. Not in time. Pirates get a run out of it as Ludwig scores. And runners on the corners now. With two men out, it's four to two. So there's some good work. Doman doing his job to disrupt things at second base and Paul flying down the first baseline. Once he gets out of the box, Ramos Ramirez with a soft toss. You see Ryan Doman trying to get the job done and Paul beats the rapid first base. The Pirates cut the lead in half. Good stuff and they're still in business. Well, a pretty good play by Pena. Otherwise, it would have been another run for the Pirates. 
Good hustle yep. down the line. And you're, you're right, a good pick by Carlos Payne. Tying run still on base. And Brandon Wood pulls strike one foul. And he bailed out Darwin Barney. Woods pinch hit home run the other night clanged off the bottom of the left field foul pole. And he is down on the count nothing in two. Let's slow it down for you. Bing bang. The gang's all here. Glove, hat, 0 and 2. One ball, two strikes now to Brandon Wood. Wood walked his first time up. Pirates stranded their first base runner in the third. It was Wood. But here in the fourth, a leadoff double by Garrett Jones got it all going. An RBI single by Ryan Ludwig. And Xavier Paul getting an RBI in the fielder's choice. One two. That's up high. Two balls and two strikes. Four two Cubs bottom of the fourth. Alvarez at third and Xavier Paul at first the stretch. And Lopez 2 2. Fills up the count, so Xavier Paul will take off with this pitch. Take a look. Not even close. Brian Knight, the umpire at first, confirming that. Here comes the payoff pitch from Lopez. That's ball four, and the bases are loaded again. Okay, James. Efficient outing in innings one and two. Three wasn't so bad, and then 25 pitches here in the fourth. His next pitch will be his 60th of the game. So James McDonald. Big opportunity to help himself. Pedro at third, Xavier at second, and Brandon over at first. Strike Good one. swing. Good swing. He's got three base hits. Sacrifice Bunn in his first plate appearance tonight. Bases full, two down. Tying run and scoring position. That's Xavier Paul. He's got good speed. One and one. James McDonald, the opposite of Ryan Ludwig. He throws right, bats left. Ludwig throws left, bats right. Low for a ball, two and one. Well, you know, going up there as a pitcher, why not guess? Percentages say you're going to get a fastball. You might not, but sit on a fastball. Take your shot right here. Got a chance to guess right. Got the fastball, and he lines it to the cap. It's Paul is in and coming around third is Wood and the Pirates have the lead on a two out bases clearing double by Pirates pitcher James McDonald. Excellent. How do you like that? Wow. Liking it. Not just a base hit but with authority to the gap in left center field. He guessed fastball. He got fastball and he wrote it for three RBIs. Sir James serves up a Big Mac. He just jump started over 20,000 people, is what you did. 5 4 Pirates. And Andrew McCutcheon looking to get McDonald in here and add another. And a chance of let's go, Bucks. 
careening around here at PNC Park. 1 0. And this one is going to go toward the wall. And it'll make it to the wall. McDonald comes in. Here's McCutcheon to the second base with an RBI double. It is 6 to 4. And the Pirates are batted around here in the fourth. That's what we've been waiting for. Clear the air. It's been a miserable series and nothing really determined tonight. But you talk about a feel good half inning. You're looking at it. Pirates unloading on Rodrigo Lopez after two perfect innings. And a zero in the third had just opened fire. Six in the fourth. How good does that feel? J Mac getting it done on the hill and with the stick. You could hear him cheering all the way from his hometown of Long Beach. Eric Jones, strike one. First three career runs batted in. Well, this game is always a first time for everything, and for J Mac, that's his first. And one thing he liked to get on the other side of is going a full seven innings. He hasn't done that yet this year. J Mac with the salute. I'd like to see that more often. I'm sure he'd like to give that salute more often. Six runs in here in the fourth. Ties the season high for number of runs in an inning. Last time they did it, the 20th of May against Detroit. This is pitch number 35 of the inning for Rodrigo Lopez. Jones fouls it back. Isn't it nice when you guess fastball and you get it, and it's right there about chest high, served up on a platter, and you don't miss it. Well, you told him to guess. You, you know, you've served it up for him. Yep. Yep. He's the, <laughs> he's the one that's got to get it done. How many times have these guys guessed fastball, chest high, and popped it up, too? So uh, just everything coming together for James. And nothing cheap about it. Wouldn't a uh, ball he just dropped down inside the chalk somewhere and got a three run double? He rode that ball to left center field. Jones pops it up and it'll go over the third base dugout. Garrett Jones started this inning with a double. Ryan Ludwig an RBI single. Pedro Alvarez a base hit. Ryan Doma a base hit. Xavier Paul driving in a run. Third six run inning this season. How about a seven run in 2 2. And Jones lifts this one deep to right field. Back is Colvin to the wall. He makes the catch. Pirates leave one, but get six. They bat around in the fourth. James McDonald with the big blow as he clears the bases with a double and drives in his first three RBI.
run bases clearing double and right here at the end it looked like Garrett Jones might have added another one but Tyler Colvin right up against the wall making the catch and the reaction they thought he got one too perhaps Dos Mas Dos Mas no nope. well, six run fourth for the Pirates and they now lead it six to four starting the fifth inning Tyler Colvin will lead off he has one of the ten Cubs home runs hit in this series and his hit the water on a bounce on Tuesday night um, an estimated 451 feet James back it up with a zero here in the top of the fifth and got something legitimate going don't let them answer you talk about answering that three spot well you doubled it now put up the zero make it stand there for a while popped him up Ryan Dolmet finds it one out Good to see Dewey back, and he's going to split time with Michael McHenry. Took him a second to find that one. And what Clint Hurdle has talked about, Steve, is having Dolmet and McHenry split time like Dolmet and Snyder were at the beginning of the year. They mm -hmm. felt they got better production both offensively and defensively out of both of them when they had fresh legs. Instead of one catching five days a week and the other catching one or vice versa, they're going to try to split it up. They've been very happy with what they've received from McHenry. Tony Campana pinch hitting for Lopez. So Lopez departs uh, having matched his run total uh, last start against the St. Louis Cardinals, giving up six on eight hits. And he gives up six on seven hits. Two and one to Campana. Two one pitch. Up in the air to left, going back is Lundwick. They make the catch. Two gone for the Cubs in the fifth. Back to the top of the order, Starlin Castro. It'd be nice for McDonald to get him here and get a one, two, three, or a quick inning. At least roll up a zero after the Pirates put six up for him. Yeah, and see what uh, how Castro feels 0 and 3, 0 for 3. He is 0 for 2 tonight. To strike one. One to Castro, who burst onto the scene last May 7th with one of the best debuts ever by a rookie. Set a major league record for a debut with six runs batted in, had a three run home run in his first big league at bat. One and two. And you watch him play. Facial expressions, everything about the way he moves, he knows he's good. He's, he's got that little air about him, and that's good. He's, he's cocky, and he backs it up with play. The sixth Cub ever to hit a home run in his debut. One two pitch, that's inside. In fact, the record for RBIs in a debut was set by Ben Grieve of the Oakland A's in 1997. He had five. Last May 7th, 2010. Starlin Castro broke that. Got a second three RBIs, his third time up with a triple that scored three. And he goes down on strikes. Show him, Dewey. Castro's 0 for 3, a 1 2 3 fifth for James McDonald.
Division standings. Milwaukee on top by three and a half over St. Louis. Cardinals leading Florida right now in the bottom of the third. And keep in mind, Steve, that where the Pirates are at this point still have 20 games remaining with both Milwaukee and St. Louis combined. So they'll play them each 10 times. They've got the Cubs for three more after tonight. They've got the Astros for six more. So even though we're getting later in the season, and even though it's six and a half back, there is a ton of baseball left to be played as Neil Walker drives one foul like it. it's going to hang fair but one foul but the, the point is they've got a lot of games left where they can make up ground and they can determine their own situation they don't have to lean on anybody or wonder what's going on in another ballpark Ortiz on Ramon a couple of innings and the Pirates gave him a little taste the other night a couple of innings three runs a couple of home runs hit off Ortiz Lopez goes four, gives up six runs on seven hits, a couple of walks, no strikeouts. Neil pops it up. Darwin Barney on the outfield grass. Makes the catch for the first out. Neil is 0 for 3 tonight. Well, the Brewers can't win tonight. That's a good thing. Yeah. And somewhat of a rare thing recently. No, they're not playing, so they can't win. But being a Thursday, it's usually a short card of activity in baseball. Just three other games in the National League. Two of them coming up later. Washington taking on Colorado in Denver, and Philadelphia is in San Francisco to tangle with the Giants. Might be a little pitching in that game. I don't care who they run out, the respective teams. Cliff Lee yeah. against Madison Baumgartner in that game. Pitch to Ludwig. Good to see Ludwig get going. One for two tonight. Had an RBI single. His first RBI and his first base hit as a Pirate. Going in the fourth. Two and one to count. The pitch to Ludwig. Fouled back. Two balls and two strikes. Starting tomorrow night, Ludwig gets to meet his former teammates. The San Diego Padres will come in. First to three. Former Padre Kevin Correa. With them last year. He gets to renew acquaintances with a number of his former teammates. Kevin will pitch on Sunday. Check the grid out on this one. And a direct call from home plate umpire Lance Barrett. Payoff pitch. Ball four. One out walk to Ryan Ludwig. Let's take a look at what we have coming up. Our Nissan road ahead tomorrow and Saturday, 6 30 for Pirates pregame, Sunday, 1 o'clock, and then it's on the road out to the West Coast. Get a nap during the day and stay up late with us. 9 30. Monday and Tuesday for the pregame, Wednesday afternoon, 3 o'clock. Padres, Giants, all games right here on Root Sports. Family trip, family trip. That's right. A lot of uh, players' families on this next swing. And after the San Francisco trip, over to Milwaukee. For the Brewers, I haven't played the Brewers in a while. Is that a complete family trip? The family both stops? Yeah. Is that the way it works? Yeah. Unless you want them to be left in San Francisco. Well, you leave your heart, not your family. Bouncer to Pena. 3 6 3 on the double play. Alvarez hits into the twin kill. He's now one for three. We're through five. Pirates six, Cubs four.
Holly Morton and Michael McHenry were busy at the wheelchair games. That's right, the wheelchair games in town all this week. They were helping out with the award ceremony, as was former Steeler Franco Harris. Uh, awards given out for table tennis, nine ball, and slalom today. And that was not where it stopped. They actually came in, and some of the players were represented for a, a pregame, if you will. And actually all, well, almost all of them, all over 500 in attendance tonight for the game. Guys, pretty awesome that they've been here all week. It'll wrap up this weekend, and next year it moves on to Virginia. Yeah, it's a great event, certainly. And the athletes have a good time over there and a great competition. Billiards, table tennis, and many other events. That's great. Competed in. Absolutely great. Good seats tonight. Right above the Clemente wall. And Darwin Barney rounds out to start the Cub half of the sixth inning. I want to send along a happy birthday wish to George Cower. That's uh, Cower with a K. Great pirate fan. Happy birthday, George. Uh, I have no idea how old you're going to be, but it's really nobody's business. Well, while we're happy at birthday. it, say happy birthday to P.J. Lorenzo in Uniontown. Big pirate fan. 96 today. Happy birthday, P.J. Well, we're giving shout outs to uh, old friend Chucky Sorelli. Used to work with John Hallahan in the Pirate Clubhouse for a lot of years. Good friend. Had a chance to talk with him today. For the stories that we can't possibly tell. Um, <laughs> telephone recorded today. Now, hopefully not recorded, but uh, hopefully not. Chucky's sweet Chaz. Good, good friend. And it goes back a lot of years. And he and Huli ran an interesting clubhouse. Never dull. Never, ever, ever dull. Sweet Chaz. 0 2 pitch to Aramis Ramirez. Popped him up foul and out of play. Count will stay 0 2 to Ramirez. Scott Bonner talking about clubhouse manager. And he runs a great operation. Bones. Got his buddy David Volk in town, and that's quite a tandem. 0-2 pitch. And this one is ripped out of third, backhanded and stopped by Alvarez. Throw across, trying to use the grass, but it pulls Jones off the bag, and Ramirez is safe. Trying to get the leather around it. Almost had the glove too far back in toward the body without uh, having to extend on the backhand as far as he thought he was going to need to. See, it goes over, but then the ball kind of comes back away from the uh, backhand side. See, up that hits back up on the heel. That's a great look by the AGH cam. He goes over, thinking he's going to have to reach out a little further, and the ball came back on him. AGH is is the best. There's nothing like it. I live for the AGH cam. Well, as you get older, you want to slow your life down and right. everything. That's what I've so. heard. I thought you went to Florida for that. Slow it down. Oh, yeah, I do. I do. Nothing and one to Carlos Pena. He clubbed a home run to center field in the fourth inning. Struck out looking in the second. Then he's got Ramirez. At first base, and takes a pitch, low ball one, one and one. Pena is a guy who's been around a little bit on a number of different ball clubs, including Texas, Oakland, Detroit, Boston, and Tampa Bay. 2009, he was an All Star. 2008, a Gold Glover in the American League, swinging bunt. And McDonald will take nice, the out. Nice shovel play by James. And that, that whole thing looks pretty easy, but as long as you don't panic, it's a comfortable play. Sometimes pitchers go over and they get a little excited, pick up the ball, throw it in the middle of the runner's back, throw it down the right field line, forget to pick up the baseball, but James did a good job. James, pretty good athlete, bouncing around off the mound, some good quick hands there. Not the easiest play. Two outs in the Cubs sixth. Ramirez at second base and Marlon Bird at the plate. Bird 
like Pena, who's been around in a number of different ball clubs. Well, that ball got through Domit, and Ramirez stuck at second base. I don't think he saw it. I, I don't think he saw it either. It's like a cross up. You know, see Ryan going down without turning the glove. The glove has to be turned with the fingers down. Mm -hmm. Well, the picture tells the story there. Can't, ju can't just go down with the heel. Got to turn the glove around so the fingers are on the ground. But uh, if you get crossed up, sometimes you don't have time to turn the glove. One ball, no strikes to Marlon Burr. He's been about a 280 career hitter. The Phillies started with them in 2002. Also with the Nationals, Texas Rangers, and now the Cubs. You know, we had that big splash scoring six, but we've only got a two run lead. This is a, an out you really want to get. You want to maintain this two run edge as long as you can. You want to. Let the Cubs get within one. That's got a whole different feel. This is pitch number 85 for McDonald. That's a swinging strike, two and one. Pulls the string nicely. And there's another example of a major league hitter looking for the fastball, and not getting it, and having somewhat of an awkward swing. Of course, they'll deny until their dying day that they look for a pitch or guess for a pitch. They'll say anticipation every once in a while, but that's about as much as you'll get. What's the difference between anticipating a, a fastball and guessing fastball? Well, what is possibly well, the difference? Well, guess sounds bad. You know, that, oh, I guess. Anticipation is a kinder word, not, not as uh, accusatory. Double barrel action going on in the pirate pen now. Really, the right hander, Bimo, the lefty. Starting to get down to the latter stages of this game, top of the sixth. Oh, Six four Pirates. Continuing theme for James trying to get in and through a seventh inning. But right now, I want to get through the sixth, and he's going to. To Walker. And that does it for Bird and the Cubs in the sixth. James McDonald gets out number three. Domic, Paul, and Wood coming up. The most recommended mattress in America. Let's go, Bucks! Back here at PNC Park with Dan Potash and Steve Blass. I'm Tim Neverett. James McDonald, six innings, four runs on four hits. Hasn't walked anybody, and he struck out three. And Ramon Ortiz facing Ryan Goma to start the pirate half of the sixth inning. Fans enjoying themselves here tonight. And they have been enjoying themselves here this summer. It's been quite a summer in spite of the recent six game slide. The Pirates are trying to end tonight. And it's it's funny in baseball. You play so many games and 
you know you win a bunch and you get to a certain point and then you lose a few and the sky is falling. Oh there's a panic uh, factor. There, there certainly is. And there's a vent. Yeah, yeah. Get some uh, air conditioning there. Those are the new uh, new breathable trousers. Well, the thing is, you know, it's, it's almost a psychological thing, especially in this case with the Pirates this year, because Pirate fans have been disappointed for a lot of years, and now they've gotten very excited. And uh, you know, sometimes it's a, it's a fragile excitement because you wonder, oh my goodness, is it for real? Is it for real? So you get into this skid, and people, well, they start to get antsy and nervous and a little panicky. So uh, you put together some wins and put that, uh, you settle that whole thing down a bit. Is that Ted Turner? I guess not. I was thinking the exact same thing when you said it. <laughs> looked like Ted uh, briefly when you looked at him quickly. You can uh, text the booth. We want to hear your questions. Text the keyword booth followed by your question and name to 412 412. We'll ask your question to Steve a little later in the game. Message and data rates do apply. Looking forward to your texts tonight. Three and two to Doman. And he lifts this one up in the air to left center field. After it is Blake DeWitt. There's one out for the Pirates in the sixth. And, uh, well, we have a moment here. Just want to send along, get well wishes, Beth Ann Ellis. Hope uh, you're doing better. You're doing okay, and we're thinking about you, Beth Ann. And, uh, wife of a good friend of ours, Jeff Ellis, out at South Hills Country Club. Beth Ann. Think about you. There's Alex Presley. Pirates like to get his bat back in the lineup. And soon enough. In case you missed it earlier, I talked to Alex today and said he felt good swinging in the cage. He hit indoors today. And a comebacker Ortiz will throw out Xavier Paul. Two down for the Pirates in the sixth. Ross Ollendorf, incidentally, is pitching tonight in Triple A. So his rehab continues. And at some point, Steve, they're going to get Ollendorf back very, very soon. Decisions. Well, a question was raised earlier in the week, and probably earlier than that, actually. But would you consider a six-man rotation to give these guys a little bit of a break here? Is it? As the, uh, the season goes along, their innings counts are up from where they've been in the past for a lot of them. And uh, the flat answer is no. <laughs> They're not going to do that. So they've got some some challenges. Uh, again, you know, see, Serge, uh, you know, trying to do what he can with, with the guys here. And he's done such a great job. But, you know, Clint even mentioned today, and I was surprised he did it because he's a guy that never looks ahead, it seems. So we've got a doubleheader on the 22nd here against Milwaukee. So that's. Another thing you have to manage. Yeah, he's aware of that. Brandon Wood rips one to the left side. Castro not going to make the play. And Brandon Wood ripped game pants and everything is at first base. You know, Tim, there's two two sides to that six man rotation story. Yeah, it might give people a breather a little bit, but you might want to be just thinking about giving one or two guys a breather, and now you stick that six man in, and you may get guys that are on a roll. Maybe you want to give them that extra day. Maybe you want to keep them in that that comfortable rotation rhythm that you've established. So it's it's not all one sided. James McDonald got a nice hand as he stepped to the plate. Why? Well, you go back to the fourth inning. Base is full, and he gaps it. Marlon Bird had to do whatever he could to cut this ball off, but the bases would clear. Brandon Wood scoring a third of three runs, and that gave the Pirates. A 5 4 lead. Now leading 6 to 4. Nothing cheap about it. The ball was spanked. Andrew McCutcheon would come up with a double to the right center field gap that would go all the way to the wall to score McCutcheon, to score uh, McDonald, rather. You know, and if Bird doesn't make a great stop on that ball and flip it back to the left fielder DeWitt, you know, James McDonald might wind up with a triple. Bird made a terrific play to. Uh, Get that ball exchanged over his left fielder when he was down on one knee sliding to try to cut it off. That ball was wanting to keep rolling. And McDonald to center field. On the button. All right to Marlon Bird. Inning over for the Pirates. No runs a hit. And a man left. J Mac swinging it tonight.
again for the Coors Light freeze cam. And we go back, way back in the way back machine. Top of the first inning, first batter, Starlin Castro to the wall, and what a catch. Freezer. Good thing he's got a big glove. That's the Coors Light freeze cam, brought to you by Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. You know, you look at that, too, and such a big glove, but, you know, half of his hand was still not in the glove, so almost uh, carrying like a first baseman's glove, like a big, see, the, the hand is not very far into that glove. Well, he and I don't know what that means, but uh, just thought I'd point it out. This one popped up, and that'll go toward the dugout. Dolman runs out of room. And uh, James McDonald out there for the seventh, but uh, busy action for the Pirates in the bullpen. Clint's going to let him go out there. If this leadoff man gets on, that that could be the trigger. But uh, he's letting him have a chance to, to go out there. It's his ball game. He's had a big part of this. Next pitch will be his 90th. They're already in the bullpen. McCutcheon has joined Bimel. 1-1-2, one, one, Blake DeWitt. Strike call, 1-2. and two. Now, the farthest he has gone in a game, six and two-thirds innings this year against Colorado on the 10th of April. Got a no decision. And on the 19th of May at Cincinnati, he got a win. Up in the air to left center. Andrew McCutcheon. Can of corn for him. Now, I've, been, I've been in these situations, Tim. You go out there thinking, okay, as long as I keep getting outs, I'm going to be out there, but if I if I lose a guy, there's a chance I'm going to be gone. So you say, okay, uh, it's up to me to run the table at this point in the ball game as far as I possibly can. So he gets that first out in the seventh, but uh, not much wiggle room. He's got a two-run lead. Giovanni Soto takes ball one. Soto a solo home run to lead off the third inning. Is the 11th of the year, 33rd run batted in. Struck out last time up in the fourth. Way outside, two and zero. Oh. You know the other factor. You want to stay in the ball game. Better not walk anybody. Bring the tying run to the plate, and he's done a great job so far. No free passes, not a lot of strikeouts. Three, but that's fine. Good strike one right there. That uh, that cuts. You know, not all that many base runners because the the the, uh, the four runs three, all four of them via the home run. So. You know, he hasn't worked from the stretch very much. All right, back to him. You want to stay in the ball game? Get an out, get another out, keep getting outs. Well, he is the only, around. the only pitcher on the staff, the starters, among the starters that hasn't gone seven innings yet. Last time he went seven innings in a game full was last September 13th. At New York, he tossed eight scoreless frames, but ended up with a no decision against the Mets. Well, the the big picture here is the fact that he gave up the three runs. It was four nothing, and now he didn't buckle. Uh, he didn't give it all away. He's come back to put up zero. So that's the overview of the night for James McDonald. And Colvin pops this one up. It looks like it'll make it over the dugout. Man, in the dugout, so close. They're out of the reach of Alvarez. That was closer to Dan Potash than it was to Pedro Alvarez. You have a chance at that one, Danny? Uh, if you say so. I thought you got a good jump on the ball. I don't know why you backed off. Uh, looks like, okay, Tim. Looks like Chris Snyder was there to <laughs> help you out. You ought to start bringing a glove down there, yeah. Dan. Well, in, in case the, the Pirates third baseman had a shot, I, I didn't want to be the one. You know, the Cubs have a little history with fan interference and foul. Never mind. You know the story. Yeah. yeah. Danny Bartman. Danny Bartman. Well, the thing is, Dan, you got to get in position to help your third baseman in case he yeah, reaches over and tumbles in. Snyder screened him down there. I know Dan was very anxious to make that play, but Chris Snyder screened him. So. Yeah. I'm, I'm. Here's a 2-1 to Colvin. To right field. Right to Xavier Paul. And a one, two, three, top of the seventh. For James McDonald. All right. He loves it. First time this year, he gets through seven. Showing a little personality there, James. That's the way to go. 
not just the cookie cutter stuff. That's good. He's soak it up. Follow the bouncing eight and six and a half, six four. Pirates leading the Cubs here in the seventh inning stretch. As we sing, "Take Me Out to the Ball Game." James McDonald with a celebratory splash of Gatorade. Snapping a streak of 24 straight starts without going at least seven. He's through seven tonight. And the Pirates, a two-run lead over the Cubs, 6-4. More picture-perfect images from the AGH camp tonight at PNC Park. Pirates behind James McDonald through seven innings. He's excited. Got a two-run lead, and he has been involved in four of the six runs, driving in three of them and scoring one himself. And he absorbed the shock of that uh, two-home run inning in the top of the fourth to put up three zeros after that. Oh, one pitch and McCutcheon a high bouncer Castro fires to first and gets McCutcheon. On well, Sunday the bunch host the Padres at 135 it's kids day all kids 14 and under get an Andrew McCutcheon drawstring bag courtesy of Bayer. Come early for the number one Cochran kids fun zone on Federal Street stay after kids get to run the bases thanks to HK Anderson pretzels pirates.com get your tickets. The right fielder for the Cubs is Reed Johnson. James McDonald having a conversation with Brad Henderson, the trainer. Jeff Samarja on the mound for the Cubs. Here's Reed. Johnson replacing Tyler Colvin. And the new pitcher. The spot will lead off. Jones fouls it back, so Johnson going in in the nine spot. And Samarja going in for Colvin in the eight spot. Third pitcher of the evening for the Cubs. His numbers. Ortiz won a couple of scoreless innings, giving up a hit, issuing a walk. Still here at a 6 4 Pirate lead in the bottom of the seventh inning. Pitch outside, one and two. So Marge of the stretch in the one two delivery Jones takes it away. Back to back good starts Morton last night McDonald tonight. Tonight the difference being that the Pirates are going to take a lead into the eighth inning instead of a scoreless game into the eighth inning or maybe even. More substantial than it is now they lead by two. Jones to left center. Will it carry. Yes it will. 
And Jones going to try for two. And he is in safely with his second double of the night. Jones is two for three. And perhaps Garrett Jones heating it up, up in that number two spot. Rides this one with some good pop to left center field. Catches the gap. Plays right in front of him. He said, I'm going. Great shot. We're in scoring position now for Neil Walker. Walker is. 0 for 3. Look to have a little more breathing room. The Pirates lead by two. Never know how many you're going to need. Yeah, Phil Boss is getting it. Say, you know what? They've grown since the beginning of this game. They have multiplied. Reason to cheer tonight for sure. Indeed. So Marge's pitch and Walker fouls it out of play. 97 on the gun. Well, you heard how much noise there were in, or there, there was in this six run to the bottom of the fourth. Let's hold on to this lead. They've been hungry for a win on this homestand. Game number four. A nice way to go into the Padre series. But work to be done. And two. And the pitch. Up by. From Pine Richland to PNC. The rise of Neil Walker from high school football star to second baseman for the Pittsburgh Pirates on a special edition of Inside Pirates Baseball. Walk to the Park. Debuts Monday, August 8th at 9 p.m. Looking forward to that. Good stuff. Swing and a miss, and Neil goes down on strikes. Go for four tonight. Tough night for Neil. He's go for his last eight now. Here's the Cubs. Now Ryan Ludwig had an RBI single in the fourth, facing Jeff Samarja with two down. Still some conversation going on between McDonald and the trainers, Brad Henderson and Mike Sandoval. To Ludwig in for a strike. 29,317 on a Thursday night. Great, great turnout. Thank you, Pirate fans, once again. You can see a bunch of you back here over the weekend, I'm sure. It's great having you here. It's great having you here. That's a great look. To right field, Reed Johnson waits for it. That's the inning. No runs to hit a man left. We're on to the eighth at PNC Park. 6 4 Cubs trailing the Pirates.
but uh, winds up with a blister on his finger. So he's soaking it in something. I have no idea. But after conferring with the uh, the trainers and there you see it up on that's that's in the area where you get one from throwing sliders or breaking balls, primarily sliders because you're, you're just releasing the ball off the side of that fingernail. That's a, a common thing for pitchers. It's called the, the slider blister or abrasion. And it might be uh, part of a blood blister or something that they put on it. Sometimes they'll put on medication that will give it that dark look. So uh, we'll uh, probably hear more about that. But uh, take nothing away from the fact that after getting uh, knocked around in the fourth inning, put up three more zeros. That's keeping it together, James. You did a great job. He was up in his pitch count too at 99. He'll finish with. He had a problem with uh, blister last year when he came over from the Dodgers. Yeah, it used to be a product called tough skin that you put on that. And there's been all kind of remedies. Bruce Keeson had a terrible time with that. He used to soak it in pickle brine. And then Kip Wells had an issue with the, uh, the blister on the finger when he was through with the Pirates. Uh, last year when he got here he was actually putting model glue on the blister yep, to heard, harden it up heard that remedy also strike call to Johnson as Daniel McCutcheon delivers the first pitch of the eighth inning the only problem with that cuts down on your ability to build those uh, those model airplanes and model cars and use up all the glue on your finger six runs on nine hits for the Pirates four runs on four hits for Chicago. Oh one. Johnson looked to bunt. Ran up on it and took a strike. Nothing into the count to Reed Johnson. Mike Quanti double switching to get him in. Colvin the right fielder out and then he put Jeff Samarja the pitcher in the eighth spot. Johnson leading off here in the eighth. Two to short right center field, long run, and no one's going to get it. Falls into no man's land for a leadoff single. Reed Johnson continues to plague the Pirates. A little flare drops in. The Bermuda Triangle between Walker, McCutcheon, and Jones. Or excuse me, Xavier Paul. Garland Castro, 21 year old All Star, became the youngest All Star in Cubs franchise history this year. One of the things we talked about at the outset of the telecast here tonight cool off Castro. He's had three straight, three hit games. So far, 0 for 3 tonight. And he takes a strike. Great speed, not the easiest guy to double up. However, he bounced into 15. So one of the easier guys to double up, as I said. He leads the team in that category. McCutcheon's all one in the dirt, one and one. Well, Castro was the first Cubs rookie to hit at least 300 and finish in the National League's top 10 since the Mad Dog, Bill Madlock, did it in 1974. Of Madlock coming over here. That special season for the Pirates in '79. Joel Hanrahan getting loose. Let's hope that we need him just in the ninth. Pirates got all their runs in the fourth when they sent ten men to the plate. Folks got the wave going here at the ballpark. Last night it was Chris Resop that came in in the eighth and gave up the home run to Starlin. That was the only run in the baseball game. So the first and Reed Johnson gets back. As players develop. There's always something about their game they continue to work on. For Stalin, it hasn't really been the offensive side of things. 
so much as it has been the defensive side. 18 errors for him. But it's some of the plays that maybe other guys don't make. And he lines one to center field. That's a base hit. Well, two singles to start the eighth inning, and now the tying run is aboard for Chicago. Starlin Castro with a single. And they're right at the top of their batting order. So the plot thickens. The Pirates with a two run lead. It is threatened here in the top of the eighth inning. The eighth inning cost them the game last night. Let's hope. And it's certainly not the case tonight. A lot of work to be done. Darwin Barney. Does he bunt? Pedro Alvarez in on the grass at this point. Barney, I'm sure, has checked with DeJesus, third base coach for the Cubs. Jones in on the grass. Pirates certainly expecting Barney to bunt. Good speed on the base pass for the Cubs. Barney squares. That's outside for a ball. Barney out of Oregon State, part of the national championship team there in 2007. One ball, no strikes to Barney. Johnson, the runner at second base. The tying run. Starlin Castro is at first. Nobody out top of the eighth. Again, squares the bunt, fouls it back. You, know, you take a look at this young man, second baseman for the Cubs, and uh, you might start thinking about the, the look alike game with Derek Jeter. He's got that confident look, kind of cocky look. He's uh, full of belief in what he can do, and he's here in the big league, so he deserves to have that look. If you're going to pick a guy to emulate, probably a good guy. Yep. Yep. He's got that expression on his face. Good looking the young ball player. Pulled the bat back that time, took a pitch inside. Two balls and one strike. I get my body out of the way of that fastball as I was kind of leaning in a little bit. He did. Big time situation. It's obvious, but here it is. Everybody uh, trying to tend to their knitting as McCutcheon keeps Reed Johnson at bay at second base. Now, is that something he does more to try to sniff out what might be going on, even though they're suspecting a bunt? Uh, it could be that. Also, it could be I'm, I'm not forgetting about you, so don't get a big lead. Puts it down in fair territory. It'll roll foul. And McCutcheon grabs it. Coming up tomorrow night should be another big night here at PNC Park. Padres are in. And it's another free shirt Friday. All fans through the gates get a Pirates t-shirt courtesy of Trip Total Media. Come to Federal Street before the game. Enjoy live music and festivities during the Barrel Kia block party. For tickets, pirates.com slash free shirt Friday. Come on, get another one of those with a different design. So Kevin Correa modeling it. Folks should be wrapped around the rotunda tomorrow night, we would suspect. Two on, nobody out. Two balls, two strikes to the second baseman, Darwin Barney. The pitch. Hit him, and the bases are full. Just clipped Barney. And now a look of concern on the face of the starter, James McDonald. Clint Hurdle not going to waste any time. He's going to the bullpen. Really hard to pick that up, but uh, Lance Barrett very close to that whole thing, and he makes the call. No real argument from the Pirates, and Daniel McCutcheon will depart, and we are in a tough situation. Stay tuned. Here comes Jason Grilly.
in the National League. Cardinals leading the Marlins. Nationals on top of the Rockies. Phillies Giants still to come. Rays took extra innings to beat the Blue Jays. Rangers winning a day game today over the Tigers. Indians beating the Red Sox. Indians have been pretty good lately. Royals ahead of the Orioles early on. Twins and Angels on the coast still to come in the American League. Well, the uh, Pirates uh, looking for a guy for the eighth inning these days. Uh, it's been Barris. Last night is Resop. Tonight is McCutcheon. And, uh, the search continues. If you're wondering about the guy who's not here, Evan Meek, he is starting his return to pitch program following injury. Scheduled to pitch a side session tomorrow of 35 pitches. Ramos Ramirez. Not out of character oh. going after that first pitch. Up and in fastball. Really coming in. Uh, scoreless inning the other night. A couple of scoreless innings to build on hopefully tonight. Scoreless appearances. Boy, you talk about jumping in the fire. Bases loaded to a Ramos Ramirez in a tight ball game. Oh, one pitch. And this one, a line drive to center field. Here comes McCutcheon. He trapped it. One run will score. It's Johnson. And now it is six to five. As Ramirez comes through with an RBI base hit. That close. But the obvious trap. And run charge to Daniel McCutcheon and Grilly will be relieved of duty. Glenn Hurdle comes out to get him. As the left hander Carlos Pena comes up. And the bases remain full of Cubs with a tying run at third and still nobody out. So Joe Bimel will come in to replace Jason Grilly in the top half of the eighth. He traps it, and the Cubs get a run out of this. Station to station for the Cubs, but uh, they are at the stations they want to be. Within one run, nobody out, bases loaded, and you're thinking of uh, a couple of possibilities. First thing being the strikeout. You want Bimel to strike out Pena. He struck out 113 times. He is very much a candidate. If you don't get that, you want a ground ball to either the pitcher or one of the corner guys to come to home plate. And Bimel will face the lefty Pena. Marlon Bird on deck. Still nobody out, and the Pirates bullpen up and working again already. And they're going to concede the run except for Alvarez with everybody else playing back. First pitch to Pena. 
Ball one. Bilo possesses a sinker. He calls his gravity ball. There's Starlin Castro down at third base. Darwin Barney at second. Ramos Ramirez, the runner at first. Ramirez with a 68th run batted in. Second hit of the night. He's two for four. Well, possibilities of the ground ball coming to back to Domit from Bimal or Alvarez. Everybody else is well back. Big time challenge for the Pirates. A skinny one run lead and the base is loaded. Nobody out in the eighth inning. One oh. It's one and one as Bimal snuck that one past him. Not much gravity on that ball. Bimal, the veteran out of Duquesne. Second tour of duty with the Pirates. Thinking strikeout. Two balls and one strike. And now uh, you know the, the whole pendulum swings. Now you're behind two and one the count. You cannot afford to go three and one. And it can happen and you can recover, but you don't want to be there. You don't want to be three and one because then you really got to just kind of throw it, throw a strike, any kind of a strike. Critical pitch right here. Follow it back up the strike two and two. Now, Pena susceptible to the strikeout. 113 of them this year. He's one of the league leaders in that category. Just a strikeout behind Mike Stanton of Florida. He's in fifth. Not a list you want to be on as a hitter. 119 against lefties. That's one side of the coin. The other side of the coin we saw in the top of the fourth inning to center field. To pass to center field. Two balls, two strikes to the first baseman for Chicago, Carlos Pena. Bases loaded, nobody out. Six to five. Pena wants time. Certainly is aware of what's at stake here. Fills it up three and two. Didn't bite on that pitch downstairs. Time run at third. Now what are you thinking as a hitter? Is he going to throw the fastball just because that's the higher percentage type of a pitch to throw for a strike? And if so, where does he locate it? Well, you can't fool around too much with corners right now. Joe Bimel has to throw a strike. Here comes the payoff pitch. And he walked it. It's a tie game, six to six. Still nobody out. And no decision for James McDonald tonight. Clint Hurdle coming out to get Bimel. So the eighth inning once again has turned into a mess. Score even at six. Back to the bullpen for the Pirates.
Rapid, but no more. No decision for him. Six runs on nine hits for the Pirates, six runs on seven hits for the Cubs. As they have played it two here so far in the eighth, with nobody out of the bases full. Joe Bima walking in the tying run after Daniel McCutcheon loaded the bases. Grilly gave up a single to Aramis Ramirez to get the fifth run across for Chicago. And now Veris will come in. He becomes the fourth pitcher used this inning, and the Pirates still yet to record an out. All started with that little flare by Reed Johnson. So now the infield will play in. Marlon Bird facing Jose Veras. Bird takes ball one. Three out of 14 in the series. I'd like to win out on deck. And you get the idea the rest of this top of the eighth belongs to Jose Veras no matter what happens. 1 0 pitch. There's the breaking ball in for a strike. Well, the go ahead run is at third base. That's Darwin Barney. He belongs to Daniel McCutcheon. McCutcheon hit him with a pitch. Third man he faced. And he came in to start the inning. Foul tip and a strike under the glove of Ryan Domit, one and two. Nice to follow that real slow curveball with a 93 mile an hour fastball. Jose Veras trying to get the Pirates out of the trouble they're in. One two pitch. And Bird lifts this one up in the air to left field. This will get Barney in. Tagging from second and going to third is Castro. And the Cubs now take the lead back. It's seven to six. And Daniel McCutcheon is now on the hook. All three runs charged to him. Let's check out tonight's. Coors Light cold hard blast that happened in the fourth inning. Already a home run hit of the inning and Blake DeWitt with Marlon Bird aboard put it into the top row over the Clemente wall. It's the cold hard blast brought to you by Coors Light the world's most refreshing beer. Down at third base, Pena at first. First and third, one out. Pirates need a double play ball here. Badly. I think that goes without saying. And they'll get it, but they will get an out. Well, two gone, and the batter will be Giovanni Soto. Hard to say in this situation you're trying to minimize damage, but that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to stay within one now, desperately. Chris Reesop last night, one bad pitch. And the Pirates ended up on the wrong end of a one-nothing score. Alan Castro hit a 3-2 pitch to lead off the eighth inning. Out in the left field stands. Nobody felt the sting more than Chris Reesop. 7 6 Chicago. Two outs, top of the eighth. Breaking ball for a strike to Soto. Soto hit a solo. Soto hit, easy for you to say. Soto hit a solo home run. Soto. Back in the third inning. And the 0 1 coming from Jose Veras. Got him on the corner for strike two. Soto didn't like it. The strike zone, and uh, they're saying that Lance Barrett had it right.
0 and 2 to Giovanni Soto. And the pitch. Fouled off and stays 0 and 2. Well, with the win last night by Chicago for the first time this season, they won four games in a row. They had only won three games in a row one other time before taking the victory on Tuesday night. So it comes in uncharted waters for them. No swing, says Brian Knight. A lot of umpires disagreeing with him sitting in the stands. Got him. Overus comes in, faces three men, gets them all out, but the Cubs take the lead. Pedro Alvarez, Ryan Domit. And Xavier Paul coming up. All season long, and these young fans all believe they'll come back here tonight, trailing 7 6 in the bottom of the eighth inning. Ed Hurdle also believes in his bunch. He's been very, very positive even throughout the current six game skid. He has taken a balanced approach in the clubhouse, trying to uplift them using more positivity than anything else. No one is more aware of he than about what is going on. Well, the Pirates trying to come back as Pedro Alvarez leads off. He's got a hit in three trips, scored a run in the fourth. Pedro yet to hit a home run at PNC Park this year. James Russell, the left hander, has given up 10 long balls, 10 home runs, a lot for a man coming out of the bullpen. One oh pitch coming. One one. And Samarja went a scoreless inning, giving a one out double up to Garrett Jones, but the Pirates could not advance him from second base. Slow roll of the Castro. One down. Good words tonight 
These are the best times for leadership. The challenge is for me to keep encouraging them. What they don't need now is to be bullied. They don't need to be ripped up in the paper. They don't need to have their manhood challenged. The game is challenging them, and they know that. We're a little talking about this skid the Pirates are currently on. James McDonald did a good job tonight. Derek Lee couldn't play tonight. The bruise on the left hand, scratched from the lineup. Turned around the top of the eighth. Now Mike Quaddy trying to get to his closer. Oh, there's Marmel. Ryan Domitz hit some late inning home runs. Some big ones. A grand slam in San Diego earlier this year in the eighth. And the strike is called. Kerry Wood, former starter and a Cub favorite. Getting ready in the bullpen. Looks like he is ready. Carlos Marmol picked up a save last night. It's 22nd and the second one in this series. Pirates down by a run in the bottom of the eighth. And Domit. Let's run into left field for a base hit. Ryan, welcome back. A little two for four night for you. Action for the Pirates off the bat of number 41. And Mike Quaddy's going to make a change. He's going to make more than one change as he heads right out to home plate umpire Bob. Or Barksdale, excuse me. Barksdale. Well, the tying run is aboard, and Ryan Domit will break down Mike Quaddy's double switch when we come back. Great pictures from the AGH cam tonight. Pirates and Cubs game four of a four game set wrapping it up here tonight. Double switch Alfonso Soriano goes out into left field will be inserted into the eighth spot and lead off in the top of the ninth inning and Kerry Wood. Inserted into Blake DeWitt's spot sixth in the order. He will face Matt Diaz. Pinch hitting for Xavier Paul. How ironic for the second night in a row we go to the bottom of the eighth inning down a run. So with the left hander out there Quinn Hurdle sending up a right handed hitter and quality counters with a right hander and 
Kerry Wood, and there is strike one to Diaz. Not playing Matt to pull the ball. They've got center fielder Bird shaded over toward right center field and deep. Oh, and two. Trying to paint that outside corner. No balls and two strikes to Diaz. And Wood strikes him out on three pitches. Of fastballs away and then strike zone says he picks up the inside corner. Perfect pitcher's pitch. That's you got to give Kerry Wood credit there. Two strikes away and then a perfect pitch inside. And it carved him up during that at bat. There's Brandon Wood facing Kerry Wood. No relation and no wood. In that. Delivery. Kerry Wood all of a sudden cranking it up to 95, according to the gun here at the ballpark. No one. Now well, it's nothing in two, so Wood's come in and dealt five strikes. And showing some very good speed, 95 96 on these first two pitches to Brandon. From the air to left center. And is caught for the final out of the inning. Pirates leave the tying run aboard. We're on to the ninth. 7 6 Chicago. Cardinals a five game suspension for making contact with umpire Rob Drake Robinson Chirinos two for two pair of singles and two runs batted in for the Rays. As they beat Toronto Johan Santana underwent an exam on his left shoulder today Matt Holiday the Cardinals three run home run in the first against the Marlins. Cards lead seven three in the seventh. With the Molina story a discrepancy over whether or not Drake was spit on. Major League Baseball referring to it as spittle. But uh, Molina said he just, it was sweat, but video replays clearly showed there was no intent to actually spit. It was just yeah, spittle. And, and that's a non issue anyway. The minute he bumps him, that's the deal. Now the hammer comes on. Joel Hanrahan, and he wished it was in a hammer situation, but down a run here at the top of the ninth facing Alfonso Soriano. Swing and a miss. Got him with the slider. Started him off with the breaking pitch. 243 for Alfonso Soriano. 
Went 0 for 4 in last night's game. And on Tuesday night, he had a big night. Went two out of five with a pair of home runs. Need to put up a zero here in the Pirates in the bottom of the ninth. Will lead off with their number nine in the batting order. Ninth spot will lead off and up to the top. One and one to Soriano. Reed Johnson on deck for the Cubs. Now the pitch. Strike two. Alfonso Soriano. Getting the majority of the night off tonight. This is his first at bat. My quaddy tries to get some of his regulars a little rest with a tough schedule for them coming up. Then it couldn't hang on, so it'll stay one and two. Cubs will fly out of here tonight. They've got a day game tomorrow at home. Short night. They play the Cincinnati Reds. And a game an hour earlier on Saturday afternoon. Seven mile an hour sail by pitch. Joel catch the flyer. And Soriano down on strikes. So Hammerhand starts his inning of work with a whiff. Face Reed Johnson. Johnson had a base hit in the Cubs' three run eighth. Pirates had a two run lead. They scored all their runs in the sixth inning. And then in the eighth inning, Cubs pulled in front. There's a strike. Daniel McCutcheon got in trouble, faced three hitters, gave up two hits and hit a man to load the bases. Jason Grilly came in, gave up a base hit to Ramirez that scored the fifth run for Chicago. And Joe Bimel came in to face the lefty Carlos Pena, walked him and tied the game. And then Jose Veras came in, a sacrifice fly by Marlon Bird, would plate the seventh run. Veras induced to pop up in a strikeout. Starlin Castro tonight had a base hit. At the second hit off of McCutcheon. Ended up scoring the tying run. 0 and 2. Lee Johnson waits. Hanrahan set. That's 1 and 2. Getting up. Comebacker hits the base. Base hit. Reed Johnson again. One out single for Johnson right off the back. Misses the foot, but hits the base. Joel Henry tried to kick that ball to somebody. Yep. Step down on it, step on it, kill that thing. You know, gets a deflection. So the ricochet hit for Reed Johnson. That brings up the top of the order in Starlin Castro. His fifth at bat. Ball one low. Castro leads the National League in at bats. 464 now, depending on what happens here. A ground ball to third. Pedro to Walker for one back to first. Double play. 
The 16th double play. Castro is it into. Now it's rally time for the Pirates. They'll face Carlos Marmol in the bottom of the ninth. Six Cubs. Pirates need one to extend the game, two to win it. And the Bucko fans believing in this young pirate team. They want to see a walk off. That's scary. Carlos Marmol looking for his third save of the series. He's got 22 of them. But he has blown seven saves this season. Rally cap is on. Steve Pierce will pinch hit in the nine spot to lead things off. Pierce and in the top of the order McCutcheon and Jones. Steve Pierce a 231 hitter on the season. First pitch for Marmol slider misses. One and oh. Loop on the blast time, Steve. Indeed. And a strike call. Got to get the base runner on first. And it's the type of game, too, uh, where both managers have gone deep, deep, maybe as deep as they can in the bullpen. Near, near to it. One of two. Healthy cut by Pierce. Carlos Marmol ahead of Pierce. One ball, two strikes. And Pierce whips it up in the air to left center. Long run for Marlon Bird into the notch, makes the catch. Hit it a long way, but Paul Park held it, hit it to the deepest part of the yard. Andrew McCutcheon, one for four tonight, an RBI double in the fourth. Marmol has given up two home runs. Thinking along those lines. It's not a bad thought, but uh, perhaps a little more realistically, get Andrew on, let him run. Catch him. Late. Strike one. Find a way to get a base runner and grind from there. Trying to slide a fastball rather, low outside. 
sixth pitcher of the evening for the Cubs. The Pirates have used six. There's the slider. Well, we told you earlier in the game that the Cubs have not taken four straight against the Pirates in Pittsburgh since 1959. Garrett Jones on deck. One two to Kutch. And he struck him out. And the Pirates down to their final out tonight. And on the verge of being swept by the Cubs. Well, if you're thinking along the lines of one swing of the bat, you've got a guy up there that can do it with power to spare. Run into one, Garrett. Strike one to Jones. Jones tonight with a pair of doubles. He's two for three. Recorded his 75th career double in the fourth inning. Came around to score. That was when the Pirates sent 10 men to the plate against starter Rodrigo Lopez and put six runs up. All six runs. Came close to hitting a two run shot part of that fourth inning. It was caught right up against the wall in right field. Yeah, that was his second time up in the inning. One and one. Two and one now. Pitch outside. And now down to their final strike tonight. Two run lead for James McDonald, but in the eighth inning, the bullpen couldn't hold it. Glenn Hurdle had to use four different pitchers in the eighth to get three outs. And it stays at two and two. Marmol loves to live on that down and in slider, the left hand batters down below the strike zone, down and in. The center field and deep bird going back. He makes the catch and the Cubs for the first time since 1959 have come into Pittsburgh and swept a four game series. James McDonald went seven for the first time this year. Certainly deserved a better fate tonight. He gets a no decision. And the Pirates have now lost a C 